Let's have a look at this problem. It's a worked problem taken from the textbook. If you've got the particular edition that this is taken from, then it can be that page. If you've got a, a later or an early edition, it won't be on that page. But you should be able to find a roundabout there somewhere, this work problem. So you can look at how they've done it in the textbook, which will be slightly different. And it's always a good idea to see things from different points of view. So that might help. So what have we got to do here? We've got to integrate this. It's a definite integral this time. So we're going to have to put some values in. And we want the answer to correct to four significant figures. So first thing to do is to try and change this into a form which means we can integrate it we're going to again use that standard integral that we've used before the integral <coughs> of 1 over x dx is the log of x plus c so that's the standard integral we're going to use and we're going to end up with using partial fractions to get some different terms so we're going to have to factorise this to get our two terms, x, x, and find out what these missing terms here are by just thinking about it. So we've done that sort of thing before. But before we could do all that, <coughs> what's the problem? Top heavy. So the first thing we have to do is this polynomial division because the power of x in the bottom is lower than it is in the top. So we're going to start off by doing this polynomial division. We had a look at one last time. So let's see if we can apply that here. x squared plus x minus 2 into x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 4. So as, as is always the case in calculus, when we get to the point where we've got our partial fractions, the integral is trivial. We'll be able to just write down the answer and then just put in our values. That's not the difficult bit. The difficult bit is the algebra around getting it to look like a standard integral. Now, if you remember, what we have to do is we focus on this and this, the highest powers. What have I got to do to this x squared so that I can turn it into x cubed. What do I multiply x squared by to get x cubed? x. So that's what goes on the top, x. And then I ask myself, and this is a little side issue, what is x times x squared plus x minus 2? x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. Write it down at the side if it's not something you can do quickly in your head. Don't make mistakes. So that is x times the, numerator, the denominator, x squared plus x minus 2. So that's what goes underneath here, so that we can work out what the remainder is. <coughs> And you remember I said last time that these must be the same. You've made them the same. So that when I do the subtraction to get the uh, remainder, they must disappear, which they do. I am subtracting now all of this from that. So it's x cubed minus x cubed is nothing minus 2x squared minus x squared that's for the next term but the one that I wanted to draw your attention to is I've got minus 4x minus minus 2x so I've got a neg minus minus gives me a plus so I'm subtracting all of these terms so that's a minus that's a minus but this is a plus so when I do my remainder be very careful there, I've got these double negatives that might come in because I'm subtracting each of these terms effectively so I'm subtracting a negative here so minus 2x squared minus x squared is minus 3x squared not plus x squared, minus, I'm subtracting it minus 4x minus if you like I can write it, think of it like this, minus 4x minus minus 2x this plus 2x gives me minus 2x 
you can easily slip up there if you're not careful. So now we bring down the next term. We bring down this minus 4. So we've got minus 3x squared minus 2x minus 4. I look back at this again. I focus on the x squared and the minus 3x squared. And I ask myself the question, what have I got to times x squared by to get minus 3x squared? Answer? Minus 3. That's what goes on top. And then, what is minus 3 times x squared plus x minus 2? And for heaven's sake, write it down if you're unsure. Don't make mistakes. Minus 3 times x squared is minus 3x squared. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times minus 2 is plus 6. So that's my value. Minus 3 times that denominator, and that's what goes underneath. Minus 3x squared, minus 3x, plus 6. Now I've got to work out the remainder. <coughs> Don't forget, I'm subtracting now this whole thing. So just work out what you think the remainder is. I'll pause it at this point and then we see if you've done it right. Be careful of the double negatives. Minus 3x squared minus, I'm subtracting each of these terms, so this is what's going on in my head. Minus 3x squared minus minus is plus minus 3x squared plus 3x squared nothing well I was expecting that to be nothing if it wasn't there'd be a problem next term minus 2x minus minus is plus 3x so minus 2x plus 3x is just x plus x if you like and the last one minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10 so minus 10. I end up with x minus 10. So now, we look at this. Our numerator x squared. Our next step, nothing else to bring down. We've run out of things to bring down and the power of x is less than that. So we finished, effectively. Where power is less than what we've got in the denominator, which is this. So we're now left with our remainder, x minus 10. So the answer is x minus 3, and then plus this remainder. So, we can say that our original fraction, which is x cubed minus 2x squared, minus 4x minus 4, over x squared plus x minus 2, can be rewritten as x minus 3 plus x minus 10 over x squared plus x minus 2. So now we focus on this right hand side. Remember the original problem was to integrate this. Here it is, the integral of this. So we've replaced that integral of this with the integral of all this. So I can actually integrate this and this and this separately. Well, they're easy enough. I can, it's easy enough to integrate this and this, so that's not going to be a problem. It's just this bit. And we've seen all this before. Now I've got to do is use partial fractions on this. So the first job is to factorise this. So I'm going to write down x, x, and think of two numbers which multiply together to give minus 2 and add together to give 1 because I've got one lot of x there. So it's this factorising idea. If there aren't any, I can use the quadratic formula to end up with the two terms, the two numbers. So I can always fall back on the quadratic formula to find the values of x that satisfy those two things in those brackets. So let's focus on the right hand side. We've got x minus 3 plus x minus 10 over x squared plus x minus 2. 
x, oops, so we've got x minus 3 plus x minus 10 over x, x. So what are the two numbers that multiply together to give minus 2 and add together to give plus 1? Plus 2 and minus 1. So there are my two factors. So we being able to factorise. If you're not happy with that, use the quadratic formula. That will give you your two values as well. Practice. If you're unsure, practice using the quadratic formula on this. And then you'll see you end up with the two numbers for x. And so that you, you can see how you arrive at those numbers. So now I can use partial fractions on this. I rewrite this as, so let's focus just on this part of it. And I can rewrite this as something over x plus 2 plus something over x minus 1. And then, once I've found a and b, I've got my integral. Don't forget at that point to include these in my integral. It's easy to forget the x minus 3 bit. So if you think you might forget that, then leave the x minus 3 there so you don't forget it. Right, I'll just pause this video here. You continue. Find the values of a and b and then carry on and try and complete the integral. Put the limits in and work out the answer to correct the four significant figures. So, so what do you get when you work out partial fractions on this? So finding A and B, we equate numerators, first step is here, and then we equate numerators, let x equals 1, x equals minus 2, hopefully this is what you did, to get values of A equals to 4 and B equals to minus 3. Pause and check. And then this is the, the original integral, by the way. I haven't, tried, I haven't bothered to rewrite the whole thing. I've just let that, you know, i is the original integral. But instead of doing that, we're now going to replace this original integral with this integral. Don't forget the x and the minus 3, which is what we got from the polynomial division. And now we split the last bit into two partial fractions. So we can integrate each of these in turn. And we can do it by inspection. And so that's the integral I hope that you got. Now we've just got to put our values in, 2 and 3. So here it is. I wouldn't try and enter it into the calculator like that. I'd simplify it. You know, I could add the 2 and the 2, for example, to get the 4. So I'd end up putting something like this into the calculator. I'd try and do it in one hit. But here are the numbers, so you can check them final answer to four significant figures. So that's integration of polynomials like this that involve polynomial division and also partial fractions to solve. Quite long-winded, easy to make mistakes if you're not careful, but that's the process. Is that, is that